It's like a lot going on, baby. Yeah, it's very heavy, heavy, baby. Yes. Whoa, is everything's moving. Everything's moving. Oh. Yo, it's your boy Lando Brown. I'm here with Mr. Cam Capone. Doing it big. Yo, uh, got another interview to do, and, you know, uh, and I hope y'all enjoy it. Orlando Brown, good to have you. Good to be here. Definitely, man. How you doing? Blessed and highly favored. How are you? I'm great. I'm just out here working, grinding, trying to keep doing my thing. Huh. Well, we'll get right into it. You've been going a little viral lately with all your comments about Little Bow Wow. Mm -hmm. So what's all going on with all that? Hmm. Well... He's got good pussy. That's all I can tell you. What the fuck you want to say? <laughs> okay. Dude. Were you surprised when he responded to you? I didn't get a response. I didn't get a response at all. I was just, that was if that's, that was no response. Well, he came back with something. You didn't see the response? We didn't get a response. That wasn't a response. A response is physically saying something with your mouth, like well, like when you, hey, you know, whoa, 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 you know, you, you, uh, that's that's a response, bro. Like a resp like this isn't, like I'm old school Hollywood, bro. Like when it come down to it, it's like you know, you gotta say something, bro. It's not about the publicist saying something for you. You know what the hell I'm talking about? Say something, nigga. Okay, he did tweet. Mm, that's cute. That's cute. We want him to say something. <laughs> That's cute. We want him to say something, though. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Do you expect him to say anything else or any more? I really don't give a fuck. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I gave him. I gave the nigga a compliment. I gave him a compliment. Now, if you gonna be mad at having good pussy, I'm. I don't know what to tell you, nigga. Fuck you mean? How the hell you got good pussy? You don't want to tell nobody you got good pussy. You just trying to keep all the good pussy in the jaw. You ain't trying to let me see. This is why I don't. That, you got me here. You the one brought me here with this shit. You tell Bow Wow. I said he got to speak. That's it. I ain't got nothing to say to the nigga. Okay. Do you expect him to say anything else or any more? I ain't got nothing to do with. Ain't got nothing to do with me, bro. Ain't got nothing to do with me. Ain't got nothing to do with me. He he has to address that. I would have, I mean, if a nigga told me I got good pussy, I would say, <laughs> I mean, I wouldn't just tweet some shit. <laughs> you feel me? Like, I'm just keeping it 1,000. It's, it is what it is, you know? What do you think of R. Kelly? I love R. Kelly. R. Kelly, <laughs> who doesn't love R. Kelly? He just can't be fucking on people. Like, he be fucking on people. See, R. Kelly will fuck you and make you fall in love and then play his music. That's, uh, that's like a catch, that's like a catch 22 win, win to uh, however you say it when somebody can fuck you real good then can sing real good and so he really mind fucked a lot of females and he got to deal with that that's that's what he's in jail for mind fucking a lot of people and fucking a lot of people at the same damn time it, he'll be all right were you surprised when he got 30 years man look check this out man you know uh you you know you can say you can say a person has thirty years, but also you can know that a person has done a lot in their life to be able to not have to do thirty years. So honestly, I don't think the nigga gonna be doing no thirty years. <laughs> That's just look how long it took them to get this far, bro. You know what I'm saying? So and plus he's a dawn. Um, we all have. We all have mistakes. We all make make uh, mistakes. We all do some messed up stuff, you know. But uh, R. Kelly is just one of those people that that will definitely do his discipline and, and get back to doing what he needs to do, you know. Um, do you think he'll come back and get like right back to business? I mean, writing for people and stuff like that, yeah, you know. But as far as being like you know, big R. Kelly and stuff, you know, I don't, I don't know. I mean, to, to the people, to the people that love R. Kelly, he gonna always be big R. Kelly. But you know, uh, realistically, for him to to keep that gift like he has and and just write, I do definitely see that happening. 
He's definitely talented. A lot of people would even say he's the king of R&B. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of shocking to see somebody that's that big go down that road and go through all this. Um, like I said, to those that he that that actually that he he knows and that he that loves him and and all that good stuff, it's like, yo, man, he's gonna always be Big R. Kelly. But we all have to own up to our mistakes. That's the the not funny part. You think he's not owning up to his mistakes? I think that he will have to eventually is what I said. But at the end of the day, right now, in this time, in this moment, I'm just looking forward to him getting out and writing for people. Mm. Do you think a lot of people still listen to his music? Um, yeah, I would be very stupid to say no. I mean, am I listening to R. Kelly right now? No. <laughs> but... I'm sure there is some people that actually know good music and they they actually love good music. And from down south on down to Texas, on down to, you know, all throughout. I mean, come on now. He made good music. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, I know somebody somewhere is in the corner listening to Samar Kelly. Yeah, yeah definitely, man. You know, he, he definitely man made a lot of music. I just remember, you know, a lot of clubs would play him, especially at the end of the night. You would always see, you know, R. Kelly getting played and, you know what I'm saying? So it was, uh, you know, kind of disappointing, I think. Well, I seen you got, you were in a Straight Outta Compton movie. Mm-hmm. What was that like? It was cool. Uh, definitely a blessing. Definitely a blessing. Um, That moment in time became a, a, a memorable moment for me and then F. Gary Gray and Dr. Dre and um, I think it was awesome. I think it was phenomenally awesome. Um, it's like one of the dopest things that I've ever done in my life. And your scene got cut? What, what, what all was going on in your scene? I mean... I'll let you go do that, but me personally, I can tell you that I was doing uh, the whole auditions for Easy E and all this old stuff, and you know, Andre asked me to do uh, the role of Easy, and um, when he went to go do the ride along stuff with Kevin, ride along two stuff, I guess somewhere it got caught up that I wasn't Easy, so they wrote me in as Dre's best friend because the role was given to someone else. I mean, that's huge, man. That's like, that Straight Outta Compton movie is a classic. Um, like I said, it was a very memorable moment and, and to know that personally I was written in because like, Dre had, had it happen. It was like, like, what else do you need, bro? I, I don't care about getting, that's why I don't care about getting cut out of the movie because I was wrote, I was written, excuse me, I was written in specifically just because this man asked to, he, you know what I mean, to have me there. Auditions was done when they called me back. When they called me, I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? Like, they was like, uh. auditions was over. So when I get the call that I got to go back, I go back and um, I got hired. And I thought it was for the role of Easy, but they gave me J-Lo. So mm -hmm. um, it was dope, man. It was dope. It was dope. Being in the music business and TV and everything, how often do you get cut out of scenes? Not, me never, but that's N.W.A., bro. What the fuck? <laughs> it wasn't about Orlando Brown. It was about N.W.A. You feel me? Like, you know, uh, that guy in that blue dicky suit saying cuz, it would have turned into that. More than less the story of, you know, it would have been like, Eddie's wearing a dicky suit. You know, that's what that's how, that's the society we live in. Back then, it would have been like, Eddie's wearing a dicky suit. Now, it's like Orlando is wearing a dicky suit, you know what I mean? But we, I wasn't, I, I was doing work, but I didn't do as much work to get to this point like I am now. So you're staying on your grind? You, uh, you got a lot of stuff coming up? Well, the only thing that I'm focused on is what, you know, uh, what matters, the show, the album, that's it. You're showing the album, okay. That's it. You, you got anything TV show? I know you got your TV show going. Yeah, the Orlando Brown show is pretty cool. Um, I... I'm excited about it. Um, the world is excited about it. And um, 
at this point, I'm just taking my body seriously. I'm taking my life seriously. I'm taking everything seriously because the show is actually a product of my life. Um, so uh, to have gotten to this point uh, to where I could be talking about having, you know, my own show and all that stuff, it's just like, yeah, man, it's been a hard road, bro. Don't nobody just get no show. So <laughs> don't nobody just get no show. So, you know, um, I'm happy. Regarding your show, Orlando Brown show. Yes, sir. Uh, who do you want to play your mom? Oh, Lou Nail. I got to have Lou Nail. I got to have Lou Nail. Mama Lou Nail, because she loved me, and I love Mr. Cat Williams. I got to have Cat Williams as my dad. That's going to that's gonna rock, because everybody was talking about all the bull crap and all this stuff. And all so I got to have Cat Williams, and I got to have Lou Nail. I plan on having them like, like, you know, like flashback days and stuff when they was younger, a little young Lou Nail, a little young Cat Williams and shit. It's going to be beautiful, you know what I mean? It's going to be dope. <laughs> it's going to be fun. What kind of show are you doing? Is it like a it's comedy? It's a sitcom. It's a sitcom. It's a comedy. Um, it's, it's basically Martin Lawrence, Jamie Foxx show, Family Matters, all rolled into one. Sounds pretty interesting. Yeah, yeah, all rolled into, into you one. You get Cat Williams and Linnell as, as, as my, your mom as, and dad? Oh, that would be, yeah. That'd be crazy. It, it, it'll snap, it'll go. I mean, God willing, I'm not asking for too much. <laughs> That's real shit, man. Yeah. Yeah, I'm real happy about the Orlando Brown show. As far as the album is concerned, um, we're wrapping it up to be packed. Are you in the studio today? Yeah, no, yeah, today, yesterday. And it's like, you know, um, it's been a long road with the album, a long, like, maybe five years. Kind of like 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 making uh uh you know that movie uh Avatar, you know yeah. things happen and you have to document it at the time that it's, it happens. It's going on, you know. You you can't just make an album and put it out no more. There's so many things that have to come with putting out an album, um, especially in 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 the position that I'm in because people actually want to know what happened with the bounty hunters calling me nigger and, and you know, uh, uh, you know, putting me out there in my draws and, and nobody pulls up, nobody says anything, no Al Sharpton, no, you know, there's nobody, no NAACP, nobody. Nobody cared about Orlando and his draws getting called a nigger, you know. Uh, then there's, there's you when, know. Uh, when did this happen? Oh, this happened quite a while ago. Everybody okay. knew about that. But my thing is, um, it's just episodes that happen in life that you're able to grasp, assess. Of course, you got to go through it, but you use your art uh, to to manifest, you know, uh, the blessing out of all the negative energy that you've acquired over the years. And and that's basically what the album is. Um, it's my it's my avatar. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'm excited about that as well. Why do you feel like nobody backed you up? Um, that's a 20 million, over $20 million lawsuit, bro. Nobody backed me up. I right. couldn't get a lawyer anywhere in the state of California. The only lawyer that I had was Steve Stovall, and he shut that down real quick. He like, I don't know what the hell, you know, went on or whatever the case may be. But, um, yeah, Steve Stovall out of Nevada. Uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, that kind of situation is just a, it's just like, wow, like, how can you not reach out to a client that's the world knows I've changed my life. The world knows this. The world knows that. The world knows that. And you still haven't reached out to your client to talk about how these guys basically kidnapped me and took me over state across state lines. And you know what I mean? So when it comes down to it, yeah, bro, I feel played on that. You know what I'm saying? Nobody supported me. Um, I feel now that you're giving me a platform to speak about it, then maybe something will happen. But I, I honestly, I, I have what the rest of this year to get my 20 million dollars or so. I mean, that's a pretty horrible experience, it sounds like, man. I mean, yeah, it's not about the money. It's literally about them, them, dog, come on, man. You know, that had a lot to do with the Proud Family thing. That had a lot to do with the Ravens Home thing. That had a lot to do with, you know, they they they, they put a glitch in that by calling me a nigga, putting me in my drawers and telling the world I was on dope when I was over there playing with kids, just chilling. <laughs> you know what I mean? Man. On some baby mama drama type shit. You feel me? So, um, 
You know, it is what it is, man. All, all real brothers and all real sisters that actually went through kind of these kind of situations, we we know what what it is like, man. It, it, it's you know, um, it's hard. It's hard on those with with big hearts. But at the end of the day, man, it is what it is. Got to got to soldier up and go through it. Soldier boy, another person who says in the headlines a lot. You know, um, you made a diss against him a while back. I mean. Soldier Boy is Whitney Houston. I ain't got a problem with that nigga, bro. No problem with him? You know what I'm saying? Who, Just who, gotta... Wait, Soldier Boy or with Whitney Houston? Soldier Boy. No, I'm not a problem with Whitney Houston. Okay. What made you make the diss song? About Whitney Houston or Soldier Boy? Soldier Boy. I didn't make no diss song with Whitney Houston. Okay. I'm pretty sure I've seen it on the internet, but okay. Maybe it was labeled wrong or... Well, maybe he sh I don't know. Maybe Whitney shouldn't have been in Soldier Boy's body because I'm trying to figure out what you're talking about. Did you see the news recently about Soldier Boy being pepper sprayed by Charleston White? <laughs> Yo, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think... I think, you know, uh, people pick on people. Because uh, they have dentures and shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Soulja Boy has real big dentures, like, huge dentures, big dentures. If that nigga ever was to suck somebody's dick, I promise to God he would chop it off with his dentures. So I, <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Fucking dentures. That nigga's got dentures, bro. I've never noticed. His his teeth does he I I never never even <laughs> well, I never thought dangerous. about it man that nigga got he be all he be getting on niggas heads and shit like I've been killing him oh nigga ah nigga <laughs> that shit is cute blood <laughs> that shit cute <laughs> that shit real adorable Whitney Houston better stop fucking playing around here <laughs> some women shit playing games around here punking niggas because you know you Whitney Houston Whitney you got me fucked up out here. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. <laughs> I'm starting to sweat this bitch. <laughs> you know, you're kind of known for saying some wild things. Mm -hmm. Kevin Gates is mm -hmm. another person who's also known for saying some wild things. Nah, 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 nah. He heard me say shit and then he started saying wild shit. It's like, yo, bro, chill that fuck out with that shit. Like, real talk. Like, I say shit because I know what I'm talking about. They are, they're hearing me say shit, and they are like, I'm going to eat my cousin's booty. Like, nigga, what the fuck are you talking about? No, <laughs> it's not about views or who can say the wildest shit. Nigga, I'm just saying what I feel about shit, bro. Like, I'm not, I'm not trying to go viral. That's what I, and somebody said that shit in a the, in, in, in the comment, like, yo, yada, 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 blase, blase. And I'm like, yo, bro, like, that nigga going way too hard. Like, he trying too hard. Like, it's a lot of people that try too hard, bro. That's how I feel. Like, like, like realistically, tell me how attractive it is for somebody to sit there and say that they eating out their cousin or they fucking their cousin and somebody else walk in and say, hey, you fucking your cousin. And nigga say, I don't care. Like, you're trying too hard, nigga. Like... Like, number one, that's something you keep to your motherfucking self. You was fucking your cousin, you nasty-ass nigga. Ain't nobody going to want to fuck you after that. If I was a bitch, I wouldn't fuck that nigga. If ever shit. I, would, I tell you the truth. Ugh, nigga, you nasty. You drink piss and you fuck your cousins. This is... It does seem so... Like <laughs> no, no, nigga, did you hear me? Ugh, nigga, you drink piss and you fuck your cousins. I just... <laughs> no! You want to drink Beyonce's piss? It's like you're just in competition with somebody. I don't know, man. I, I don't got to drink Beyonce's piss, man. I'd tell you that shit. Were you surprised when you seen any of these things? I, I seen what? Kevin Gates say some... That, that pussy ass shit? Yeah, bro. It. Like, look, check this out, man. I ain't worried about no Kevin Gates, bro. Kevin Gates is my son. It does seem like something you'd want to take to your grave. If you accidentally found out you was being with your cousin. That's something you wouldn't want to take to your grave, bro. You feel me? Like, niggas is, niggas is gassing, bro. On bloods, niggas is gassing. 
I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Like, like niggas is gassing, bro. Niggas don't want me to come. <laughs> niggas don't want to see me. Because I'm going to give them a hug. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to chill. Orlando is Orlando all the time. You feel me? But if you want some whole shit, nigga, I'm going to tell you. That's some pussy ass shit that nigga said. You fucking your cousin, nigga. You want to drink Beyonce piss, nigga. Nigga, what the fuck's wrong with you, blood? You stupid. I don't give a fuck who you are, nigga. And you my son, too, nigga. You lucky we inside. I'd have spilled on the floor when I said that shit. Real shit. Well, he said regarding the Beyonce thing, he said he just was man, saying fuck that, man. He what everybody never else was thinking. Should go down this man's throat, bro. Come on, my nigga. You feel me? You 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 do this shit for all the G's, my nigga. Every G that watched this shit, they they are watching this shit. Like, look, check this out. That little nigga telling you some real shit. Man, come on, bro. He shouldn't have said that shit, bro. He shouldn't have said that shit, bro. It made me look like you need help, my nigga. Because if you're going to fuck your kids, is what you said. That's what you said. Yeah, nigga, you're going to fuck your kids. That's what you're going to do. You're fucking your cousin. You're fucking your auntie. You're fucking your mama. You fuck. What, what are you going to do? Sticking your dick in shit that don't belong, nigga. Like, stop playing, bro. Real talk. If you fuck your Cousin, you'd fuck your mom, you'd fuck your daughter, you'd fuck your brother, you'd fuck your sister, you'd fuck all of them, bro. You're a family fucker. What the fuck are you talking about, nigga? That's just weird. Support that nigga if you want to. Okay. I'm, uh, okay. Nah, because that shit real. And when are your recent interviews? You were accused of DMing Mariah Carey. I did. Okay, and what were you DMing her about? Because I wanted to fuck. That's it. That's simple. <laughs> I wanted to fuck next bitch. <laughs> oh, and do a song. Okay. Did she respond by any chance? Oh, God. I need a drink. <laughs> I was going to drink on that note. No, um... Nah, she didn't respond. Uh, she she just told me she told me I was crazy and shit, and was like, "Yo, Orlando, um, well, you know, just maybe, but you know, she just kept it real." <laughs> Orlando, no, just I don't know, Orlando. Well, maybe I don't know, Orlando. Dream lover, come rescue, ooh, baby. I was like, damn. You know what I'm saying? Her titty is light at the... Let me... Okay, I'll tell you. No, no. I'll stop. It's okay. Go ahead. Go no, ahead. No, it's all right. That's what you wanted. That's what these niggas ain't paid me enough for that. <laughs> no, nah, I'm fucking around. Yeah, man. Were you just trying to piss, piss Nick off? Or was it just Nah, like... man. It, uh... You know, I wanted to do a song, man. It was just for a song, bro. It was just for a song, bro. That'd be huge. Yeah. You got no. any features on your music? I got a couple, but not not nobody like Mariah yet. That'd be a blessing. That'd be a blessing, man. You know. Um, and no disrespect, I just they. You gotta understand, y'all. They like me to say crazy shit. So if I don't say no crazy shit and I don't give these niggas nothing, it don't go viral. It don't get. This is the. So yeah, uh huh. I say what I want to say, but at the same time, I say what I'm not supposed to say just to give it some spice. So yeah, uh, it was just for a song, man. Uh, and and yeah, it would be awesome if I did do a song where she did say it was a big possibility, and they allow me to play like this. That's why I take advantage of it. So yeah. <laughs> You know, a lot of people know you were on the Dr. Phil show mm -hmm. a while ago. And, you know, would you like to see Dr. Phil or talk to him? Yeah, he's awesome, bro. I would like to go see Dr. Phil just to give him a hug and tell him thank you, man, for, like, opening the door to show people that actually think they don't have, they don't need help to go get help. You know what I'm saying? And um, I actually thought about reaching out and saying, hey, y'all, uh, I'd like to come back and see you and, and, and do some things, you know what I'm saying, as far as, like, you know, uh, give you a hug, shake your hand, uh, uh, apologize to you, you know, in, in front of your face and say, hey, man, you know, apologize to your wife and stuff, but thank you so much for uh, uh, putting me on a, uh, on a journey to where I could be able to, to accept the help. And, you know what I'm saying, like, that was really dope, you know what I'm saying, so, yeah. 
Were you surprised about the effect it had on you? Um, I was actually surprised because, like I said, man, um, when you're in the state of mind that I was in at that time, bro, like you just, you just be everywhere, be thinking about all kinds of stuff and the racing thoughts and all this stuff. And then when I'm thinking that I don't need help and you go around a lot of people that actually need more help than you, it makes you have to admit that you need help. Like, damn. Yeah, I may not be that fucked up, but I'm fucked up in these areas. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I, I appreciate that, man. Um, him allowed me to uh, walk through that door to where um, now I can turn switches on and off. I can, I can say something to go viral and, and then turn that switch off. Or I could say something positive and mean that. And then I can also look you dead in your face and say, hey, man, this is an awesome opportunity. Thank you for the platform. It's, 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 it's me being in tune and in touch with myself. You know, um, I don't think I would have been able to do that without Dr. Phil. Mm, so he helped you a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, okay. Hopefully you get back on there. That would be dope to kind of go on there and talk to him and tell him how everything worked out for you and how you're doing better. And you know what I mean? Uh, you know, he's been doing his thing for a long time. He does a lot of really great work. Yeah, he does great work, but this is what they don't know. He does a lot of great work for the for the soul. Like, like, like when you're by yourself, that's who you are. When you're by, you are who you are when you're by yourself. Who you are when you're by yourself is who you are in life. Farrakhan said that. Okay. Minister Farrakhan said that. He said, when, who you are when you by yourself is who you are. You can't run from that. He puts you in a position to where you have to be by yourself. And you have to deal with the man in the mirror. See, and if you can't deal with the man in the mirror, you can't deal with anybody else. You can't deal with nothing. You got to deal with you first, man. You know, if you're dealing with yourself and you sitting there every day and you deal with yourself and you like yourself, you say, yo, man, I'm cool, man. You laughing at your own jokes. You, you chilling. You good. Are you? Yeah, yeah, I, if you can deal with yourself, that means that somebody else can deal with you. Mm. But see, if you can't deal with yourself, that you don't want to sit there alone by yourself. You don't want to wake up and you don't want to go look in the mirror. You don't want to see your own eyes white or low. You don't want to see yourself. High or low. Yeah, you got a problem. You don't want to deal with yourself. Some things you got to fix because you don't want to deal with yourself. Why do you think anybody else want to deal with your ass? Mm. That's what Dr. Phil make you deal with. The soul of you, not the mind or the feet or the body. It's the soul that matters. Real shit. Okay. I hear you. I feel you. Yes, sir. Man. And, you know, I'm saying you're making a lot of progress with everything. You know, what, what's your day-to-day -day life like now with everything since Dr. Phil? I'm on the hideout. Um, they've kidnapped my son. Um, they've silenced my wife. Um, they've seized my house. They've closed my Bank of America account. Um, yeah, I'm just waiting to die at this point. But, at the, but realistically, I have goals. Um, but yeah, that's what that's like. You know, my wife has been silenced. My son has been taken from me. Um, uh, together as a whole, one, my family has been taken from me. Uh, my home has been seized. My bank account has been seized. And I'm supposed to be dead within the next week. Why are you under such this big attack? Uh, well, that I can't disclose. But, but I can tell you that, that, that all this stuff is true. So Orlando's supposed to be right now, Orlando's supposed to be relapsed and I'm supposed to be homeless and broke again and all this shit didn't work. And blah, blah, blah. It's supposed to go down. It's supposed to go down or I'm supposed to get arrested or shot or probably just uh, ambushed at a grocery store or some stupid shit. I don't know at this point. Yeah, like it has to be. It has to be a shutdown. It has to be some kind of shutdown. But, you know, hey, at least I got to tell you before it happened. What's it like when everybody's plotting against you, man? How do you, what do you wake up um, every day? I, I, man, I, if I have my bag, I, it's in the car. I stay with my Bible, bro. I, I stay with my, I stay, he'll tell you, I stay. I, <laughs> I be sitting there with, playing classical music or gospel music, and I be in my Bible, bro. I be in my worry, bro. And then I, the Holy Spirit will give me an idea. I'll be like, oh, okay, or oh, whatever. And I do it. 
and I'll watch it for like maybe an hour first and then I'll let it go. And then and then I'll I'll be nervous even watching it. Like the little video I did uh, oh gosh. The video I did on Lunel, the video I did on uh Bow Wow, the video I <laughs> The video I did on Jada Jackson. It's like I I I sit and <laughs> I sit and it's like an audition mentally. Like I look at it and be like, You are fucking nuts. And if I just can't stop laughing, that's the only way I let it. I let it go. If I just can't stop laughing, then the Holy Spirit will allow me to, <laughs> to let it go. But other than that, I, I promise you, I don't be. <laughs> you mentioned Janet Jackson. Yo, you a fan of Janet Jackson? You like her music? I love my sister. She's awesome. Okay. She's fucking amazing. Well, what was the video all about? She's, her little brother fucking with her with his, with his big sister <laughs> that's family shit bro <laughs> okay you ever met Janet Jackson? <laughs> my sister bro like yeah <laughs> my sister yeah she's okay. good bro yeah what was it like growing up with Janet Jackson as your sister? oh god hard she mean as hell <laughs> My sister, she got a big old heart. She got a big old heart, and uh, she just, at the end of the day, wanted to make sure that um, that I'm ready for what God has for me. You know, she's one of the hugest, if not the hugest, guardian angel of heaven, um, and she's very close to God. So. Um, She's not an easy win over. <laughs> yeah, my sister's not an easy win over, but I love her with all my heart. I'll do anything for Janet Jackson. That's my sister, bro. Did she ever introduce you to Michael? Oh, man. Here we go with these questions. All I can tell you is at the end of the day, man, I love my sister, bro. Okay. I love my sister, man. I seen a video. Where you basically were talking about uh, Puffy, P. Diddy. Who, my baby mama? Your baby mama plotting against you. Uh, yeah. Okay. That's how the bounty hunters got there. That's how the bounty hunters got there. But, you know, um, you know I'm not here to, to bash nobody, man. Um, this has been a hard bump for all of us, for everybody. And... Um, you know, I want to be able to to see my kids in heaven. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, my daughter, you know, Diddy has my daughter. Um, I would like to see her. So I can't sit here and bash him and all that crazy madness and all that craziness. I'm not finna. It's not what I'm here to do. What I'm here to do is I'm here to make sure that all my baby mamas know. It's time for my kids to see their damn daddy. <laughs> That's it. That's all. You know, um, you know, uh, no issues, no extra stuff, man. But, um, you know, if I don't see all my damn kids, it's going to be a problem. <laughs> I hear that. Is that on your mind a lot? Oh, man, my baby stay on my mind 24-7. <laughs> 24-7, you know, um, yeah. That's it. That's what it's all about, man. I'm not doing this for me. <laughs> what about Jay-Z? You a fan of Jay-Z? This news music? Mm, I love Jay-Z. I heard recently he's looking for somebody. He said he don't charge to do verses or something like that. I'm not scared of a mic. Uh, okay, you want to get on a song with him. I've seen the same thing. He did an interview with Kevin Hart. And he says he very rarely, or he doesn't charge for features, and it's mostly done off relationships. And uh, sometimes he says he does it just out of if the person's talented, you know. Um, yo, I play, you know, I, I you know, um, I know how to contact the world. Um, I know how to get the bag. Mm, it's a okay. time for everything, and a place for everything. Um, I feel like that would be something that would be awesome. It's an extreme blessing. Jay-Z says he's not retiring. 
He's going to keep, he says he's not sure if he's going to put out music. He's not quite sure, but he says he's not retired and, you know, he's going to just see what happens, man. You know, how do you feel about, you know, Jay-Z, you know, keeping doing his thing and everything? I feel at this point in his career, he could pretty much do whatever he wants to do. And for him to continue to want to be the, the uh, architect of rap is just like, yo, that's dope. Because you could do that on your downtime, too. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could do that on your downtime, too. Just, you know, overlook, see something talented, you want to jump down, that's cool. I mean, that's just keeping that's just keeping uh, the gates closed for those that actually don't know what hip-hop is about, you know. So I, I commend for that. That's awesome. I think it's dope to see somebody that age continuing to be, still make headlines, you know what I'm saying? Their music still be looked at as dope. I mean, it's kind of like... It's kind of a rare thing, you know what I'm saying? There's only, what, like him, Eminem left from the 90s who are still relevant, you know? I don't think anybody else from the 90s gets their music listened to. Right. Um, I feel like, I feel like you know, we give a lot of homage to those that actually have the torch. But there are a lot of people out there other than me that are fire don't have the platform don't have the voice though so you know him being able to say hey yo i'm gonna still be in the game i'm still not gonna retire i'm gonna still you know you got youngins like me you got youngins like other people that's in the game that actually need that guidance and need that that you know that uh that reassurance that there is somebody in hip-hop that actually has been through everything in hip-hop you know what i'm saying like to get advice from um I think that's dope. I think that's dope. I think uh, I think that what he's doing and what, where he's going, uh, it's pretty cool. It's clever. Yeah, Jay-Z has definitely always managed to keep up with what's going on and, and to keep going, man. You know, it, it is dope, man. You know, but I know a lot of people want to know about, you know, what's your current status and, you know, relationship like with Raven Simone. Oh, uh, I'm never doing the show. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm never doing the show. Um, the only reason why I, I say that is because, you know, um, it's been just way too too long, too, too, too much disrespect, uh, too much arrogance, um, too much ego, you know, so she can just keep all that. <laughs> she can just keep all that. But I think, I, like I said, I start, I, like I said, I'll start. It's like with Raven, man. You got to realize, man. Um, I, I, I'll never do the show because of the disrespect, because of how long it's been. Um, and it's just, it's just a lot of personal things with Raven that she just, I just, I'm just disappointed at that. Is it frustrating for you? No, I'm disappointed at her finding out all the new stuff. <laughs> Like you went that far, damn! Like, like uh, according to her, I'm supposed to be dead right now, nigga. I'm not supposed to be doing this interview. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's crazy, but it is what it is, man. I wish her the best. What was it like making the show? But you know, uh, that's a raven. I it mean, was fun. You know, you kind of grew up on the show. It was fun. You know, it was fun. What was your life like, you know, outside of the show when you were doing it? Was it kind of, kind of crazy? You know what I'm saying? Like being being that popular no, and everything. It was, it, no, I've always been. I mean, Major Pain made me popular. I mean, let's talk. I mean, let's really talk about it, bro. Like, you know, you know, Fillmore was out before that. So Raven, I hired Raven to do Fillmore. You feel what I'm saying? Like, like, like. I'm that nigga. <laughs> like, like you feel me when Raven, it was Raven, the, that's what I told Vlad. Is yo, Raven, the Raven show was was absolutely psychic. It wasn't that so Raven, bro. It wasn't like you know what I mean. She was like, you know what I mean. So when it come down to it, it's like, like I had my show going on. I had Fillmore, and it's like, all right, cool, yeah, popping. I right, yo, I know this chick. Yo, we just did the pilot for Absolutely Psychic. She's real cool. Like I gave her. You know what I mean? Uh, a, a handout like, yo, come do my show. You feel me? And, and now it's like, oh, no. 
Uh, let's talk Major Pain. Let's talk Family Matters. Let's talk Jamie Foxx show. Let's talk Sister Sister. You know, let's talk a uh, 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 Nash Bridges. Let's talk. <laughs> hey, let's talk. Let's talk Coach. Mm. You know, let's talk about those things that made Orlando Brown. Let's not. Let's talk about me sitting on Jay Leno's couch before anybody knew. You you know it, it's you know what I mean. Like let's talk about the real. The real is I gave her an opportunity, and when Disney seen me, they knew I was the poster boy. They said, "Oh, we got a show, Bill Cosby show, Family Matters, this this major paint." Oh, and we got. That's how it happened. So we're not gonna play like Raven made me a star. We're not gonna do that. You know what I mean? So as I said, it's a personal shit that she got to deal with. You know what I mean? It's some real personal shit that she got to deal with. And when she gets over that hump, anything's possible through God. But she got the answer to the shit she been doing. Mm, okay. So it's fixable then? Yeah, for the fans. And for my kids, yeah. But just for her life to play out like she wanted to play out? Nah, no. Nah. She gonna have to come talk to me. What's it like working for Disney? It's awesome as hell. Oh, we oh oh, that's the family. They treat you good over oh, there. Oh, that's that's my family. I loved. I, I I got I got the I got the castle somewhere on my neck. I got Mickey on my arm. I, I, that's the family. I I I love I love my family. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I went through my little hurdles and stuff like that. I mean, but you got to think about it. I mean, yo, Shia LaBeouf was the first one to actually go nuts. Smoking cigarettes in public and all of that, and I was, I was, I remember being young, looking at Shia like, damn, like, like you really tripping, bro? You out here smoking cigarettes? And you know what I mean? Like, I remember it was, it was a few. I mean, even Christy, Christy, uh, Christy, not Christy Newman Leon, uh, Christy Romano. Like, you know, it's just like Christy Romano kissed me in the mouth. I was like, ooh, what the, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It was just little, little things like that, like, you know what I'm saying, that, that turned, like, turned me on to, like, yo, man, we, we can be rock stars, you know what I'm saying, but still, you gotta know, you know, you gotta know how far to take it, and, um, um, Disney always protects us, man, like, they just, that's, that's, that's the, that's the mother, that's the motherboard, bro, <laughs> that's the motherboard, bro, like, we're everywhere. It doesn't seem like you have to be like really clean and you kind of like no, can't you don't, really bro. make no, no, no mistakes. Yo, man, look, ask Eddie Murphy, bro. Eddie Murphy, man, they funded Beverly, the first Beverly Hills cop, bro. You know what I'm saying? It, anything can be done through God. Anything is possible through God, bro. Beverly Hills Cop was a it was a Disney movie. It was a Buena Vista, a Buena Vista production. They shot Beverly Hills Cop on the property of Magic Mountain and Disneyland. Wally World was Disneyland, like you feel me? So you gotta realize it's 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 who can touch the people. What you've done in your past, we've all made mistakes. You know, look at people like Robert Downing Jr. You know what I'm saying? You got people like Robert Downing Jr. And they came back now, that boy. What hey, Iron Man? <laughs> you feel me? Like like it, it, you gotta just get your shit right. Get your shit right. When you get your shit right, everybody gonna see you get your shit right. We, we know when you got shit right, when you don't got shit right. When you get shit right, all right, cool. You never know what the possibilities may be. But first, you gotta get your shit right. And that's what they didn't think I was gonna do. <laughs> they counted you out. Counted me out, man. So, uh, But just because they counted me out doesn't mean that I don't count them in. Mm, okay. Just because I'm building a table doesn't mean you can't sit at my table. I've been building this table for a while. So, 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 every time I came to your table, okay, you was telling me no. You wouldn't teach me how to do it right. You wouldn't give me a fork. You wouldn't teach. You wouldn't tell me how to cross my legs. You wouldn't give me a napkin. You wouldn't give me a fork. You wouldn't give me a spoon. But now this, this table is built now, though. Now the table is built and you at the table. You at the table. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to tell you. Somebody get this. Have a seat. Somebody get this man a chair. I'm going to show you how you're supposed to be sitting at a table. Because maybe that table that you were sitting at, nobody ever showed you how to sit at a table before. It's probably why you didn't want me at the table. But I'm going to show you now at this table that you've been watching me build 
how to eat. And if you got a problem when I when I sit you down and have them pull out that, that chair for you, if you got a problem then, then I don't know what to do with you. Because everybody got a seat at my table. Everybody. That's what's up, man. You know, it seems like you're real motivated to make things happen. You know, hopefully, you know, everything gets going for you, man, you know? <laughs> God willing, man. I seen you follow a few Tupac pages. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're you're a little younger, you know what I mean? So, I, I mean, I, when, I, when I grew up, you know, Tupac was like, that was like, you know, the number one dude, you know what I'm saying, for us, man. You know what I'm saying? You're... You're a little younger than me, you know what I'm saying? What? How'd you get into Tupac? Me at 34, uh, it, you know, it's not too young. I was able to watch his whole life. Not the beginning years, but when he became Death Row and before Death Row and Brenda's got a baby. So, I, you know, I was maybe seven, six, whatever the case may be. But the influence um, of how someone speaks when you talk, you have to know what you're talking about. You have to understand that people are listening and that you can actually manipulate energy with what you say. So therefore, you have to make sure that when you talk about Tupac, it's like, you know, um, everything about him was influential. Everything about him was influential um, and is influential. Um, what you got to realize is when they try to defeminize people, they try to defeminize people first by killing them. Then they turn them into a female and then they're walking around and you don't realize them and they don't want you to know because they're female. Um, a lot of people don't know about his real hardships. A lot of people don't know about who he really is and what he dealt with and what was taken from him. His soul was taken from him. See, we wasn't looking at Tupac. We was looking at Stone Paxton. That's who we was looking at. The man that assaulted Tupac in jail. You understand what I'm saying? So once you put your mind into into understanding what the way I look at things, Pac is the most strongest and most hardest man that I've ever fucking known and ever fucking seen in my life, bro. They seen where he was going. They knew what he was trying to do and they knew what he was doing and knew what he was capable of. And they took it from him. Mm. Yeah, man, that's it was just. It was sad to see, you know what I'm saying? I was a huge Pac fan, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, that was kind of my era of music, you know, when I grew up. So, uh, you know, do you feel like people kind of disrespect him a little too much nowadays? Nah, they're trying to defeminize him. They're trying to defeminize how masculine he was in this game. Mm. What do you think about T-Pain's recent comments where he said that his lyrics are peanuts Compared to today's rappers. Oh. <laughs> I think his bank account's peanuts. <laughs> mm. Compared to mine. <laughs> That's what I gotta say. Okay. What about Chris Brown? Did you check out his new album? Chris is dope. Um, the album I did not get a chance to check out. But I feel like people want to see more from him. He's a, he's a talented guy. Um, very, very cool dude. Uh, I've heard he, he can get a little egotistical at times. It has nothing to do with me. I can too. But at the same time, the album, I haven't. I haven't taken a listen to it. Um, are they saying bad things about it? Yeah. Yeah, it only did 70,000 the first week. And it was kind of like a hip-hop, more sounding album. And a lot of people were kind of just like, you know, felt like it kind of what, what isn't what they're looking for. You know, they, they, you know, Chris Brown gets compared to Michael Jackson a lot. So you kind of expect him to do... I don't see how... You know, a little different. Michael didn't beat his bitches. 
I never beat any of my bitches. <laughs> they lied. <laughs> no, but but I'm just saying when it comes I, I down to I think they were talking about musically compared yeah, to uh, Yeah, but but personally. musically but yeah, but musically personally, man, it there's not too many people that could be me. But what I can tell you is at the end of the day, he does hold a candle to a lot of people that is in the industry, you know, like Tank, all these people that, you know, when it comes to his voice, all that stuff, dancing, yeah, he murders a lot of people, but when it comes down to just that, nah, I can't, you know, they use that, they use Michael Jackson's name lightly, too lightly, way too lightly. They comparing to Michael that don't, can't even, nigga, <laughs> you feel me? Like, you, you know what I'm saying? It's just a... From Mystique to, like I said, that old time Hollywood type of swag. You know, it's just Mystique. It's 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 who you know. It's what you're able to see. What energy you're able to manipulate. You know, who's what sharks are in your tank. You know, um, uh, his music is a product of his mind. You know, uh, music is the the definition of music is people being able to pay you more than a penny for your thoughts. Okay. What are these niggas thinking? I have no idea. Yeah, okay, thank you. You know, the definition of music is people being able to pay you more than a penny for your thoughts. They ain't thinking shit to get more than a penny. Okay. You feel me? So that's where we're at right now musically with Chris Brown. We want to hear more, but there's not, he's not thinking about nothing. It's nothing that's create. He is, when Tyler Perry writes some shit, he goes to Cancun. <laughs> okay he goes sit there and on the beach and he'll come back with six movies you know it, it, you have to you got to go and focus you got to focus go to the drawing board you know what i'm saying and figure out what is the heart of the public um now me and now i feel like if me and chris did some shit that'd be dope it's something people would be excited about rando and chris that's new shit we both bad we both got the same brown and shit. Okay, that's dope. That's dope. But we're looking for more than just the sex symbol. You know what I'm saying? We looking for some shit. We trying to shake up the world, baby. You know what I'm saying? We trying to do some real shit out here. You know what I mean? I got in my Diddy mode. I'm sorry. I started licking my lip. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Yo, Diddy, you gave me the Ooshkash Kusmash. You gave me the Ooshkash Muaf. The Shmoosmash. Diddy, yeah, son. I mean, I mean, you gave me the Ushkash Muash. I love it, yo. I love it. You gave me the Ushkash Muash. And <laughs> that Ushkash Muash. You know what I'm talking about, Diddy? Hmm. Hmm. You know, one thing I do see about you is people do actually say good things about your music. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Fuck. When... <laughs> If I go, man, why man? Go ahead. <laughs> you said, yeah, my music. Um, I think it's cool, man. I think, uh, for the most part, you know, uh, I like doing the music thing only because it puts me in a position to where I could be free to say what's going on with me, and nobody really judge me. Or have something to say, like, extra or something like that. Like, like in my music, nobody can tell me I'm wrong. Um, in my music, nobody can hold me hostage. Nobody can tell me who I'm not. Nobody can lock me up, lie to me. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm always about to start crying talking about that shit. You know what I mean? Like, that's my world. Like, my son. Like, my kids. 
Yeah, I just keep my eyes on my babies. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, that's what it is, a song to me, like, my babies. That's why I'm doing this. I'm doing this for them, for my babies. When they go back and they look at their dad's writing and all that stuff, it's for my baby. So I'll be serious, you know. Um, that's what my music is, man. I'm, I'm glad that a lot of people um, uh, see, see, see positive and hear, hear the positive in it. Um, I'm, I'm I'm not with the, the cussing a lot in my music. I'm not with... Um, uh uh the whole gospel pro gospel thing no it's you know uh don't be afraid to uh, to acknowledge what god has done in your life and um and don't and don't and don't be trying to hide what god has done for you in your life and um and and, and don't be afraid to be a testimony um because of a lot of things that have happened in your life um cuz a lot of people um have gone through probably what you've gone through and and and, and worse than that and uh and and flaws in people's lives, uh, uh, they, 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 they sharpen up the soul, you know, so don't be afraid to express your flaws, don't be flawed and wallow in it, but express your flaws, because there's so many people that are flawed, and that have flaws, and I think that they got to like if like if I come to this interview like I was telling him come to this interview I gotta go over here to the to the, I gotta just now pick up my outfit from the damn drive cleaners like, everything got to be perfect no niggas dog dog hair I got dogs no you know what I mean it, it's it's real shit going on in life man everybody can't be perfect yo ain't nobody perfect man and I think that's what that's what people are forgetting man you know and that's what a lot of people are missing with Chris's album too they expected it to be perfect and it's like come on man he just doing music he just doing what he love. Skip the ego. Skip this. Skip this and that. I mean, I'm just doing what I love. I'm just regular Chris. Doing what I love. Where's Orlando? Because <laughs> these niggas don't get it. You know what I mean? Like, that part. <laughs> when did music become a passion of yours? Uh, music been a passion of mine ever since my mom taught me how to start singing. Ever since my mom taught me how to start singing. I, I, um, you were singing at first? Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I'm known to do is sing, but, you know, um, they told me I couldn't rap, so I focused and conquered it, and so the second album is going to be all R&B, but, um, yeah, man, I, 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 my mom, uh, she just, she taught me how to, she taught me how to sing, I fell in love with it, and that's where, that's where it all, that's where I unwinded. How'd you and Pimp C link up? I was in some trouble with some people that was doing me dirty in Texas that still owe me a lot of freaking money. And uh, basically, he ran them out of Texas and uh, became like one of my best friends. Mm, that's crazy. I don't think I, I think people be kind of surprised to to know that you and him kind of had like such a close relationship. Mm hmm. What was it like spending time with him? You know what I'm saying? Because you were around him. Kind of towards the end, end he right? He didn't play with people. That's what you get out of me. Um, he just don't play with people. That's what he, he, he stood for, collective. Togetherness. Did he teach you a lot of... Hey, man, check this out, man. A whole ass nigga. Man, fuck ass nigga over there, boy. Man, you know what I'm saying? What you need to do, get together with them. You know what I'm saying? Saying, when you get with them, maybe they can get your whole ass some motherfucking money. But you're sitting over there acting like that, boy, then did something to you. Now you can't get nothing with that, boy. Y'all y'all, 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 boys need to get together, man. Y'all boys need to get together, man. Man, I, I, check this out. I got $5,000. Say, y'all boys gonna get together right now, man. Y'all squat this shit. Huh? That's what they didn't want. That's what they didn't want. Cause he was pulling people together. They killed my brother because he was pulling people together. And, and, and they was about to buy, they was about to do a black distribution. It's a distribution company, all black on all black music, distribution company. Ah man, you taking money out, out of out of out of the industry's pocket. And I'm half industry and half streets. So that's my pocket too. Nah, y'all niggas gotta stop. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? Pops was like, nah, nigga, y'all niggas can't. So um, they shut that shit down. But as far as him getting shut down, um, I think honestly it, it was it was uh it was because he was about to do the Orlando Brown show. 
Yeah, he okay. Had, yeah, and then we signed the, the the well the whole little music shit about to put me on, but his main focus was the Atlanta Brown show. He wanted. He was to about to put you on. Yeah. You guys had a record deal or something going on? Yeah, live soul entertainment. Yeah. Mmm. Okay. And so when he passed away, that kind of messed all that up for you. Nah, not for me. For the world. How did it affect you when he passed away? Mm, I start beating the ground with my bare fist at the rental car company. I started beating the ground. What else could I do? They wouldn't let me figure out where he was at. They wouldn't let me tell. They wouldn't tell me where he was at, but I knew where he was at. They wouldn't tell me where I, where he was at, and then I was like, I told my girl at the time. I told, I said, oh, I know where he at. He at the Bellagio. I pulled over there to the Bellagio, and uh, I was like, what the hell? <laughs> Did you stop doing music afterwards? Mm, for a while. I didn't, um, like three years. It took like three years. I had just talked to him. Mm. I had just talked to him. He he was about to do, uh, uh, I sent the text to these chicken. No, uh, what, what, uh, no, that was, what's the name? I'm talking about, uh, oh, I choose you, baby. That whole shit. And he wanted me to do the video, and I was in Texas. Mm. I was in Texas, and then Al when Cam he got done with that Cast, shit, right? yeah, yeah, and then um, I had ended up moving to LA, and um, I was like, man, what's up? And he was just like, what's up, man? You know, miss your old ways, man. I miss you, bro. You know, we got to get together. I said, yeah, man. Well, look, man, don't close your eyes like Cinderella, because if you do, I'm going to come kiss you and wake your ass up. <laughs> That's exactly what I told him, and nigga went to sleep. <laughs> yeah, rest in peace, Pimp C, man. Yeah, man. Well, Drake dropped a new album. Did you have a chance to check it out? I think he's on a whole nother level. I think he's dope. I think people will understand later. So you think that this, because he did get some criticism about this album being, I think, a little bit too much dance music. And... I'll, tell, I'll call Drake right now and tell him to go pick up the bitch that, of the nigga that said whatever the fuck that he said. And then, and then we'll all have a politic with that nigga's bitch. And, and, <laughs> like, don't talk. We're not, no, Drake is Drizzy straight. Like, he's good. What he's doing, bro, people is not going to understand that until, like, they actually look at the next plane that he buys. He has advisors, things that are going on and, and you know, words that he need to say for different countries that tap in. It's that Disney shit. People don't understand. You know, <laughs> you, go, you know what I mean? You, you, you get so far um, pulling certain coattails, but saying certain words go further. You know what I'm saying? I know that the best. You know what I'm saying? Saying some, certain words, certain scenarios, certain sentences can get you. You know what you kind of what you kind of need at the moment, but at the same time, what you got to realize is, you know, like I said, in the end, when he's buying that second seven forty seven, then I think they'll understand. Did you see when that dude was trolling Drake, and then Drake slid in his wife's DM? Oh, oh, oh! So you just now made me uh, uh, a truth teller. Good, yeah, yeah, exactly. He'll slide in your DMs. <laughs> Real quick, hey, how you doing? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You can't play with Drake, bro. He's dope. Aubrey's dope. Yeah. I mean, you you could definitely imagine that happening to some chick just hopping in his private jet and taking off. Yeah, well, I mean, at the same time, it bet you know, it, it, it better it better it, it better be like, you know, Drake is raving. I'ma just keep it real. So, you know, for me to be like, oh yeah, Drake's raving. No, 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 nigga. Yeah, he's transsexual. He's really raving Simone, and you know what I mean. So I, can, but that, but look at the look at the love that I'm showing him, knowing what it is though. I'm still, I'm, I still love you. I still know what it is. I still, but, you, but nigga, at the end of the day, you're raving, nigga. Mm. Yeah. So I could. Yeah, that's good. Uh, yeah, uh, Drake. Oh yeah, he'll steal your bitch. Oh, ha. He just better not think he can steal my bitch. Because <laughs> I have a wife, not a bitch, you know. I had a few bitches, but my wife is my wife. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, 
two different two different kind of lives, man, that people live, man. You know, um, they have a female life and they have a male life, you know, and uh, those that have enough money to be able to acquire that knowledge uh, physically, they uh, they turn out to be Drake. Have you seen fake Drake? <laughs> Going around pretending like you mean he's real Drake? Drake without his face on? <laughs> yeah, I seen that nigga. I seen DJ Khaled too. <laughs> it's a, yeah, you know it is what it is. They what do you think it. about dudes like that look similar to to famous people kind of going around dressing up as them? Um, I just think that it's a getting it's, a bag off I, of it. I, I mean, I I think it's an old thing, like an Elvis thing, like old thing, like an Elvis thing. It's like you know, a couple people here, a couple people there. Now I'm famous. Mm, okay. You know, let me get a couple fake drinks here, a couple of fake DJ Khaled's here. Yo, yo, oh, yeah, I'm big. It's, it's all for the mind, bro. If somebody really loves you, they're going to do that shit theirself. I have kids that literally have grown up doing twisties in their head because of Eddie from Nassau Raven. Mm. I know the real influential shit. All this shit that they're creating because they don't have their faces on. Uh, no, let's cease that. You know, I'm a real Elvis fan, real, you know, a real me fan. You know, like MJ and shit, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't put myself in a position to to look at people that have the potential to be legends um, and, and, and actual have actually have the potential to to take over the world in a legendary type of in a, in a, in a legendary type of way. Um, and they just they they take shortcuts because they they know that they know the tricks and the trades of the industry. Mm, okay. You know, five heartbeats. I'm going to go pay uh, uh, seven girls to show up to the show and sit in the front and scream when I jump on stage. Ah! <laughs> now that record producer over there is like, hey, who are these guys on stage? You know what I mean? But it was all my cousins and one of my sisters. You know, like, you know what I mean? Like, you know, it's, it's the tricks and the trades of Hollywood. But, uh, you know, unless you really, really know your, your, your shit, you, <laughs> you ain't going to make it. Real shit. One of the things I've seen that you kind of spoke about recently was I've seen you speaking about Hollywood or Hollyweird and, you know, people selling their souls. And, you know, I know you were kind of, you know, linked into Hollywood and everything for a long time. And I you know am Hollywood. Yeah, I am Hollywood, which is why I know. But I'm not arrogantly going to sit here and be like, oh, this is that and this is that. Like, it's a lot of things that will make you buckle, bro. Shit to make you buckle, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, Shit that make you start crying and shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? What people do. Like, it's not no glorious shit to be talking about. It's really right. high, it's really Hollywood. It's really fucked up out there. It's really fucked up bad. And like you just be like, damn, I was just listening to that man's fucking album. His star is on the floor and this motherfucker sitting right here. Like you unless you're not intoxicated unless you're just you know you have to be really in tune with life and just notice bone structure skin eye color everything you have to be in tune and you'll be able to see it it'll manifest itself right in front of you you know what i'm saying but just for me to be sitting here and being like nah nah because man people don't lost their families bro people don't lost their kids and shit people don't, people don't, people um a lot of stuff didn't happen do you think there needs to be more of a light Shed on on Hollywood, or Holly no, Weird? No, no. Exposed more? No. Don't nobody want to know what happened to them people's families and shit. Don't nobody need to know that shit. Mm. Ever. I know. That's all I need. To, that's all I need. I don't need to do that. That's not for me to be. Uh, nigga, you get killed for shit like that. That shit is real. You know what I'm saying? People done really, really went through some shit. I mean, you know, what I'm saying every once in a while you have somebody come out and. Kind of say some things about Hollywood or some of the stuff that they see. When I tell you I am Hollywood, I mean I literally am Hollywood. Expand on that a little bit. What do, what do you mean by you are Hollywood? What do you mean I am Hollywood? Like, what? Like, you ever seen, uh, you ever seen Baba Lou? You know, Baba Lou. Okay. You know, yeah, Desi Arnaz, you know, Desi Arnaz. Is, yep. You know, Joe Jackson, right? You know, yep. Joe Jackson. Okay, cool. Yeah, my daddy owned all that shit. Every studio in Hollywood, every fucking block in Hollywood, anything you can fucking name in Hollywood belongs to Lucille Ball and Desi Arnaz. 
<laughs> so when it comes down to it, you know, um, not to disclose too much, but I will tell you, I am Hollywood. I'm their baby. You know what I'm saying? So some shit, I just can't be like telling. It's a lot of people that got fucked off behind trying to be where my mom and dad is at, at the top. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, you got to just be real cool. got to be real evil with how you think, you know? Like, my daddy is Lucifer and my mom is God. You understand me? So it's, I'm a very special case. They get, so I can't put myself in position to be just like talking about people. Like, people got smoked. People got kidnapped. People got, a lot of people got fucked off behind Hollywood, bro. And they're dwelling right there. That's all I can tell you. French Montana said something recently that was really interesting. I mean, it, it's not directly with Hollywood, but, you know, it's about record labels. And he said the record labels are taking life insurance policies out on rappers. Mm. Um. Mainly because it's more dangerous I mean, for rappers nowadays. I mean... This is a touchy subject. I just, you know, uh, I, I'll give you this. You can willingly turn woman and have a bag, or you can do what I'm doing. You can willingly turn trans, or you can get in trouble and get your go to jail and get fucked up, and they do it to you forcefully because you fucked up and you didn't know what to do with your blessing. So... Out of those two ways, me sitting here in one piece is not easy. It's not easy at all. You have to be respectful. Like, can't be just like, oh, yeah, you think I'm, you think I'm sitting here playing with people's lives and these niggas got wives and shit, bro, and kids and shit. Yeah, what they did to me was fucked up. So I, I have the right to say whatever the fuck I want to say because they never thought I'd be able to say it. Okay, but when it come down to just this industry and how people are willingly turning trans, turning female rapper just to get the bag, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what I will tell you. Other than that, bro, all that shit is bullshit. All of it is bullshit. Ain't nobody gonna work no more. Ain't nobody gonna fight the devil. Ain't nobody gonna fight my daddy. Ain't nobody wanna fight my daddy. That like real shit, I'm telling you, don't nobody wanna fight. And I'm sitting there till I said, Dad, look at me. I'm fucked up. You better let these people go. <laughs> Stop fucking with people. You're like, no, nah, nigga, I'm gonna fuck with you too. I'm like, nah, nigga, you can't. All right, fine then. Now it's down to love. Either you love me and leave me alone, leave me in the world alone, or give us all what we need and let us play. And that's where we're at right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just can't. I just can't go back and forth about the industry and all that shit. It's just, it, it's bullshit. All of it's bullshit. If you can't stand up for yourself, if you can't speak for yourself, if you can't take what God's giving you and, and go through the battles of having a gift, a divine gift, then it shouldn't be for you. It should be taken from you <laughs> in Jesus' name. <laughs> mm, okay, okay. Now there's been a viral video going. Of a guy who brings his kid McDonald's. But he doesn't bring any food for the other kids of his baby's mom. And it went viral. And people were debating, should he have brought everybody food? All the kids food? Or just his kid food? Hmm. Well. Because she was flipping out about it. She was like, you got to buy everybody food. Sound like my wife don't like all my other baby mamas and just her kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I mean, I honestly feel like, look, check this out, man. Um, you know, you're supposed to feed. You're supposed to provide. You're supposed to feed, bro. You know, you're not going to just feed one kid. At least, I mean, if you're not going to feed the moms, at least feed the kids. Right. That's all I can say. At least feed the kids. Mm. So you feel like you should should have brought more. Okay. Well, Kanye's been quiet lately, mm -hmm. which is 
You mean uh, Jim Jones, Kool-Aid man? You know he killed all them people with that Kool-Aid. He put all the Kool-Aid in the <laughs> That's the Kool-Aid man. He killed all them people, and he's sitting there burning churches and all this shit, and, and don't nobody know he the one that killed all them people in the Kool-Aid. They still going to the new church. Because <laughs> he black. What about this nigga? $500 shoe selling ass nigga. When I, I got on some Jordans that got sent to me for free. No, nah, nigga, you don't do that. You don't sell five hundred dollars shoe. Fuck that nigga, bro. On oh, God, fuck that nigga. He ain't got shit to see. When it come down to Kanye, if you're gonna sell five hundred dollars shoes to your people and then still be trying to make them dig in the collection, you still be trying to dig in the collection play too. What don't you see? Mm. It's a greedy nigga, bro. That's a greedy ass nigga. I don't give a fuck who know it. That nigga's greedy as fuck. Five hundred dollars shoes to fifteen dollars shoes, fifteen. Wait, wait, and then and then we got a church, right? And then and then who who knows that who knows that that these people that we we go, cause you Kanye, right? So next thing you know, all these motherfuckers that come to your church got bread. So that collection plate ain't like the regular fucking pastor's collection plate. Your collection plate fat as fuck, nigga. On top of you selling fifteen hundred dollar, five hundred dollar, fifteen dollar shoes. I want to slap that nigga, bro, for playing with my name. So you feel like his shoes are overpriced? Man, I feel like he shouldn't be wearing a crucifix when I did. So he's kind of biting your style? Nah, bro, he's not Jesus. Jesus. The Lord, thy God, and all this old shit that he's thinking in his head, bro. See, if you're going to think that about yourself... Nobody's gonna fuck with you. You think you're God, bro? The fuck? If you think you God, who the fuck am I? <laughs> does that under does that under undermine who my father and my dad is? Who or my mother, who my mom is? Does it undermine that? Cause I know who Joseph and Mary is. Does that nigga? <laughs> you feel me? So like you know like like it's just like another thing with like like Kendrick Lamar running around here with a crucifix with a three. Number one, the guy asked him how much the crucifix was, and the entourage answered. He never said shit. So all of a sudden you see three million. That nigga didn't spend no three million dollars on no fucking crucifix. Come on, man, y'all niggas fall for the okie doke. Niggas be gassing y'all, bro, cause it looked pretty. Yeah, you know I mean, cause it looked pretty, bro. You know what I'm saying? What that nigga need to do is learn how to pray. That nigga daughter was not allowed to be in his possession, and he got on the internet, and he couldn't even know, he didn't even know how to fucking pray. He can't even speak in tongues. And you want to tell me about Kanye in my interview? I reached out to this motherfucker how many times, Aaron? Man, fuck Kanye, bro. Mm. A lot of people say when you kind of like become famous and popular and everything that, you know what I'm saying, things are a little different with the police. Have you noticed anything since you've been famous? I signed autographs for cops. That's it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hey, my daughter loves you, this, this, that, and the other. That's cool, you know. Um, when I'm in jail, uh, they always want to ask me to, to sing and tell them stories and stuff, real shit, bro. Like... Like I make sure every number that I get in jail, I call the daughters, I call the the moms, and I you know I call the brothers and sisters that you know that that are you know yo yo dog like my my brother dog he's an actor I know he is bro if you could just give him an opportunity bro like if you could just you know call him when you get out and shit bro I know you know I'm I'm stuck here dog but if you just fucking take this number bro call my little brother bro it's gonna make his fucking life bro like that kind of shit fuels me <laughs> that kind of shit fuels me so I, I'll call like hey bro your bro. I was locked up with you, bro. Oh my god, bro. Are you serious? My brother told you to call me. Like, I like that kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? So it's like just to, to have a connection with people. I think that my connection with my fans is way different than a lot of these people. Um, I'm family to my fans um, and to my supporters, to my obedience out there. Um, I'm family. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm family. You see me, and it's it's not Orlando. It's it's that's your cousin, that's your brother, that's that's you know what I'm saying? Like like, 
hop in the car, you know what I'm saying? Like, kind of like Elvis, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody fighting, he fresh off tour, he put the light on the top of the car, and he going to get him. Hold on, wait, 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 what y'all doing over here? Yeah, I'm Elvis, but I'm still a humanitarian. I'm still um, um, a, a socialization uh, 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 officer. You can't fucking just beat up on this man like that. You know, we have other jobs too. Multiple irons in the fire is what you must do today, in today, um, in today's uh, uh, roundabout world. <laughs> you have to have multiple irons in the fire. Mm, okay. Okay. Were you turned in with Kevin, Kevin Samuels at all? Uh, I, I like Kevin Samuels. Um, I don't mind Shatan. Shatan is cool with me. I know Kevin Samuels is Shatan. Um, Shatan's cool with me. He was very controversial. He is very controversial. Yeah, he's cool about about his views on women and. Yeah, well, I just can't. I don't. I don't get with people that fake their deaths, bro. That's just. I'm sorry. That's why they want my ass dead. Cause I'm not gonna sit here and play with you. Like, <laughs> the nigga not dead. He's family, and I love the fuck out of Shatan, bro. That's Shatan, bro. I don't know who Kevin Samuels is, bro. I know Shatan. Okay. Did you agree or disagree with his views on everything? I didn't know Kevin Samuels. I know Shatan. I just know when I see him, I'll be like, oh, that's Shatan. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know nothing else. I, I, I never really kind of like, got, I didn't know he was big like that. I thought he was a pastor or something. They said he was a pastor when it, when, when it first went down and shit. I was like, oh. But I looked at the face and the first thing in my head, how I see things, I was like, that's Shatan. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> He's not dead. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> How do you feel when people were celebrating his fake death? I don't know, man. I was just like, where's Shatan? <laughs> okay. I was like, where's Shatan? I love Shatan. Hey, Brian McKnight better stop playing, bro. I promise to God. You'll be all right. Mm -mm. You want to find Kevin Samuels? Ask them niggas for Brian McKnight. Okay. Well, Orlando, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate you, bro. <laughs> man, dope interview. Thanks, you know what I'm man. I'm saying I'm sure. Uh, I apologize if I said anything to uh, offend anybody. I, 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 I love you guys, man. Um, it's been a, a blessing being here with you, man. Thanks for the platform, man. And uh, like I know what to say to, to, to tinker and make people think and all that cool stuff, but uh, I just hope to, this time I didn't go too far with it. Love y'all. <laughs> I appreciate you, bro. Thanks, bro. Sure. <laughs>